No, the title of this video is not clickbait. This, even though it's in a small niche retro community, I'm going to call it now is going to be the biggest gaming disaster of 2022. You can't make this stuff up, man. Let's get into it. Skip it a button, that up. So uh, me and Tommy Tallarico, now the former CEO of Intellivision, uh, we we've had a an emotional roller coaster of a I guess you could say professional and um, allegedly personal relationship. Even though I've never physically met Tommy Tellerico in person in my life, well now because of my harsh criticism of the Intellivision of Miko and how I think it's a complete dumpster fire. And if it was any other company, I would say the same thing. But for some reason, everyone in the Amico camp says that I'm being a bully. Tommy um, is no longer a fan of me. As a matter of fact, when I live streamed on my secondary channel, RTU Streams, which there'll be a pinned comment to below in the description, make sure you go check it out. Right after I live streamed, He's unfriended me on Facebook and blocked me on Twitter. He decided to leave me a Facebook message <laughs> and it said this. You're such a misguided, nasty, phony person. Seek help, dude. You have issues. When I criticize Sony, does Mark Cerny, you know, slide into my DMs and say things like that? Does Phil Spencer? No. Gee, Tommy, I wonder why you're no longer the CEO of Intellivision. I have I have no idea why. I, I can't. I. I hear some things, and, and if those are true, I, you know, I'll, I empathize with you, but I'm sure it's not the only reason you are no longer CEO. I replied back with, have a great weekend, Tommy, and I do. I hope you're having a great weekend. Um, I, I hope that uh, your jaw is hitting the ground somewhere and everything is going very well. That's how Tommy's uh, tenure as CEO of Intellivision has gone. He has had spats with people on social media. He wants he has he wants to be a debate bro. He's come on my live stream and answered questions, and I told him that the questions aren't going to be filtered. And in the end, he decided to call my audience gaming racists. The racists. They're literally gaming racists. Now, before everyone gets on my case, yes, I have harsh takes on people all the time. The two major rules I have is don't go into their personal lives, which I never would. I would always keep it about the topic at hand um, and don't attack family. I didn't do either of those things. If you're a public figure, everything else is fair game. I would never send anyone to attack anybody. I would never tell my audience to bother anybody. But what has happened with Amico, and I think Tommy did this by design, is that he's created a cult. He's created a cult around the product. As a matter of fact, one of his fanboys went on Twitter and said that Tom, you you were friends with Tommy and you betrayed him. No, I never met Tommy in my life. He is a person in the business who wanted to come and have an interview on my show, and he and we interviewed. Uh, like, here's the thing. I don't like I could, And even if I was friends with Tommy, other people have pulled that with me before. I thought we were friends. Doesn't mean I'm not going to call you out on stupid crap. I consider Griffin Gaming a friend and he still criticizes me and I would criticize him, too. But the thing about Griffin Gaming and I is that we have these things that are called spines and we could take criticism from other people and not consider them enemies just because they're being critical of our work. I know that's hard to wrap your mind around, and, and 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 but that's the thing that Tommy wanted. He wanted a cult around it, so basically they were echo chambers, and Tommy has a fragile ego, so he needs to have accolades thrown towards him all the time, and he was thinking if he built up this echo chamber that, oh, good word would get out there because there's a bunch of robots out there just preaching what I want them to preach. Again, this is speculation. I don't have Tommy's playbook in front of me, but that's what it seems like. He, he like I've never seen people get so defensive about criticizing a piece of hardware that doesn't even exist yet that there's blatantly obvious things that it should be criticized for like the fact that they're over 8.7 million dollars in debt and the console's not even out yet that they don't even know like they said in the SEC filing I get they have to show all the scenarios there that the console may never come to fruition and you said the console Tommy countless times was going to be affordable and under $200 and now the new CEO which we'll get to him in a minute says that the console may any be anywhere from 250 which is pushing up on uh, on Xbox Series S territory and more expensive than the Switch Lite territory to now it should could be 
almost as much as a PS5 digital edition, $350, and the games could be up to $20 in price. What happened to the affordability? And keep in mind, this console, for those of you who don't know, because I'm sure this this video is going to bring, because no one really cares about the Intellivision Amico, so when I talk about it, no one gives a crap. But for those of you who are coming here because this story is insane and isn't just about the Amico, this console was supposed to be under $200, and the games were supposed to be like five to 10 bucks. Now we're at $350 and the games are going to could be like $20. So you have a console that's more expensive than current gen ninth gen competitors like the series S and almost teetering on the price of the PlayStation five digital edition. And it has the processor from around a 2015 mid range cell phone with Microsoft zunes for touch controllers and motion controllers. You can't you can't make any of this up. This is this we are in the twilight zone. Now, if you want to go into the nitty gritty and the financial dire straits that Intellivision it is in because of the poor, piss poor mismanagement that's going on there, there are videos I'll have from Pat the NES Punk. I'm giving credit where credit's due. He deserves the credit, him and Ian. And there is a video from the No Swear Gamer, which just it's numbers, it's math. You can't refute any of it. Okay. You could find out more about that, <laughs> but this is about another, this is a, th this is just going to bring this whole thing home. And I, I thought, I, I thought I was going insane, but here we are. No, this is true. Now the new CEO is Phil Adams. Okay. He was the former chief revenue officer, uh, for in television. Okay. So, okay, what's all right, they hired he was the former chief financial officer. They thought he was the right person for the job. What is the big deal? Well, Phil Adams was involved. I, mean, I remember I filmed this video in Texas, man. Time flies, but Phil Adams was involved in another retro gaming product uh that ended it, it was a dumpster fire as well and came crashing and burning down, which was initially called the Retro VGS and then was called the Coleco Chameleon. Remember that one? Remember when they went to a toy fair and then they said they had a Coleco Chameleon, but it was just an SNES Junior just duct taped together? He was part of that project. Now, what's interesting about that is they wanted to get a Kickstarter going, okay? They were already under a bunch of flack, and they we, and for Kickstarter, you need to have some kind of physical prototype to show people. And they did show one. They even, they even got the... Uh, rights to use the Atari Jaguar shell, which I don't understand why the hell you'd want to do that. But here is, you're looking at the prototype right now. Um, all right, cool. Looks like it's a console. Looks like they have a motherboard in there they're working on. It ended up being a capture card, a old PCI capture card that they thought that no one would catch on to. And people like in the Atari age forums and all over said, yo, we know that capture card. It wasn't a real prototype. They made a board. They put a board in there that had, was a capture card, had nothing to do with the FPGA they promised to put in there to just lie to say they were going to have a prototype, even though they didn't have one, just so they could get on Kickstarter to get more crowdfunding. Needless to say, Mike Kennedy, who was the president of that project and he, who was the one who was trying to throw the snake oil all over to sell to people, it imploded. Coleco was like, you cannot use our name for this product anymore. And it was a disaster. Well, you want to know who <laughs> was part of that team of that very successful retro gaming project? Phil Adam was the VP of business development over there. The same guy who is now the CEO of Intellivision. They have a loan out with somebody over there. Again, go watch Pat and Ian's video. Go watch the No Swear Gamers video where this per they, they loan them money and th this person is looking for $100 per Amico that's sold. Why do you think the price has to go up? Intellivision Amico is now doing another crowdfunding campaign, which Tommy swore, we're not doing any crowdfunding. We're not, we're not like Atari, the new Atari VCS, which, hey, Tommy, the Atari VCS is, is I bought one at Best Buy. I swore I wasn't going to buy one unless it got to retail and it got to retail. Where's the uh, Amico? Where is it? Just just let me know. Well, anyway, beyond him 
lying about price beyond him. He'd be lying about the price of games and all the other gaslighting that Tommy has done to these smaller YouTubers that now have Amico dedicated channels, which I guarantee you they Tommy's going to leave you twisting in the wind. Okay. When this project fails, he's already going back just more proof for people. If you want to know how Tommy's going back on tour with video games live starting in April. If he thought in television was actually going to release this product and they were in the ninth inning getting ready to go out of the gate, okay? Do you think he'd be going back on tour with video games live? Think about it. It's over. The new CEO, Phil Adams, is taking a week vacation when you're about to launch a product because they're not he's not they're not about to launch a product. What I guarantee you what Phil is gonna do. <laughs> What Phil is going to do is they're going to they're going to sell off the IP to this. They're going to shut everything down. But anyway, they're on their fourth uh, campaign for crowdfunding, which again Tommy swore they were never going to do, on a website called Start Engine. Now it's already a red flag. They're going to crowdfunding four times. Okay, Start Engine is has a D plus rating on the Better Business Bureau. So not only does it look terrible that they're dipping into crowdfunding again, they're so desperate that they're going to a questionable crowdfunding website, sorry, Mr. Wonderful, to get more money. It's over. They have over $8.7 million in debt and they're not bringing in or bringing in next to no income. It's over. It's done. And then I find out that Phil Adams used to be the VP of business development for the Coleco Chameleon, which was a scam and a dumpster fire. And now he's one of the executives. Now he's the CEO of the Intellivision Amico, another retro console that seems disastrous. And you don't want me to talk about any of this. You think I'm being mean talking about this, Tommy? And, and and all the other on all the the Amico cult out there, you even got Smash JT jumping off the ship. He 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 made a video saying, "All right, Uncle Uncle, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I can't chill for this anymore." People ask me, R Rich, you know, on my live streams anyway, because no one really cares about this on my main channel. But this was a, a special occasion. Why are you so interested in this? Because I've never in my life before seen a cult around a piece of hardware that may never come to fruition. Shit, products like the Ouya actually came to fruition. There was no cult around that. I was hopeful with that in the beginning, but then I saw it was going to be a piece of crap, and I called it a piece of crap like it is. Did the CEO of Ouya at the time come to me and start leaving me DMs, Tommy? I've been critical of PlayStation. I've been critical of Nintendo many times, especially during the Wii U days. I've been critical of Sony, Micro, you name it. What a, name a, a company out there. I applaud them when they do things good, and I criticize them when they do things bad. You see Mark Cerny or Phil Spencer or Shigeru Miyamoto sliding in my DMs and telling me to seek help, Tommy? I make jokes about them all the time, too. It's it's I do a comedy show. And yeah, I have harsh opinions, but they don't come bother me, Tommy, because it doesn't look good. It didn't look good how petty you were on social media. It didn't look good you gaslighting all these smaller YouTubers to make them think you're friends so they can be echo chambers for your product that probably isn't coming to existence. That's what made me mad. Do I care that much about the Amico in and of itself? No. But don't piss on me and tell me that it's raining and then get mad when I say that you're pissing on me and it's not rain. That's what bothered me. I don't care about this product that much. I care about how unethical everything around it is and you basically brainwashing people into being your unpaid warriors for the Intellivision Amico, which may literally never come to fruition. It's almost guaranteed it's not. The best case scenario is that the people that pre-ordered it get a pack and play Intellivision that's way overpriced and that's it, just so you could pay back some more debt. This is Richard Review Tech USA signing out. Have a good one.